As former U.S. officials travel to Taiwan, China performs combat training over the island. Plus, Jack Ma gets reined in. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell, and this episode is sponsored by Daily Peanut. The news can be a tough pill to swallow. That's why Daily Peanut gives you a daily dose of news in equal parts humor and substance. That's something I can appreciate. This week, President Biden sent an unofficial delegation to Taiwan. The delegation included former Senator Chris Dodd and former Deputy Secretaries of State Richard Armitage and James Steinberg, who served under the George W. Bush and Obama administrations. It's an unofficial delegation in that none of them are currently U.S. officials. Not unofficial like these guys just randomly decided to go to Taiwan on their own. You know, visit Sun Moon Lake, eat fried squid at the night market, meet with Taiwan's president, Tsai Ing-wen. Just normal tourist stuff. Biden's move isn't especially provocative or unusual. In fact, the White House emphasized that they were following a long-standing bipartisan tradition of U.S. administration sending high-level unofficial delegations to Taiwan. But of course, that didn't stop the delegation from, <laughs> say it with me, folks, angering China. Why did Biden send this delegation now? The dispatch of the unofficial delegation comes as the United States and Taiwan mark the 42nd anniversary of the Taiwan Relations Act. Plus, the Biden administration sent this delegation to Taiwan at the same time they also sent John Kerry to China to talk about climate, which totally got overshadowed by the Taiwan thing, because the Communist Party is really starting to freak out. It warned the U.S. don't play with fire. Really. Playing with fire is Wall Street encouraging Americans to invest in China? Defending a democratic country from a hostile communist takeover is the right thing to do. It's defending against fire. Speaking of defending against fire, Taiwan's going to need some help with that. Because the Chinese Communist Party knows that you don't just use your words in a conflict, you also take action. That's why the People's Liberation Army is holding live fire drills near Taiwan during the U.S. delegation's visit. But as I've mentioned before, the Communist Party has been escalating its actions against Taiwan for months. Earlier this week, before the U.S. delegation arrived, China sent a record number of warplanes around Taiwan. The planes flown Monday include 18 fighter jets, four bombers, two anti-submarine planes, and a surveillance aircraft. And the Chinese regime is no longer calling these incursions routine military exercises. As Biden's emissaries go to Taiwan, China is now calling them combat drills. Hu Xi Jin, the editor-in-chief of my favorite Chinese state-run media, The Global Times, warned if the U.S. and Taiwan take further prominent actions, PLA fighter jets will fly over Taiwan Island to declare sovereignty. That's not how it works. If it were, then I would really be the owner of the Scarborough Shoal in the South China Sea. Hu Xijin also said, if Taiwan forces open fire, that will be the moment of all-out war across the Taiwan Strait. Yes, instead, Taiwan should just let the Chinese military invade Taiwan without defending itself. That's the best way to avoid war. Unfortunately, it seems like Taiwan just won't learn. Besides meeting with U.S. delegations, Taiwan insists on unveiling new weapons it can use for defense. Doesn't Taiwan understand the best defense is a quick and unconditional surrender? Obviously, things are very tense right now between the U.S. and China. That's why the Chinese premier is calling for more communication. How's this for more communication? We have a serious commitment. Uh, to Taiwan being able to defend itself. We have a serious commitment to peace and security in the Western Pacific. Uh, and uh, in that context, it would be uh, a serious mistake for anyone to try to change that status quo by force. Hmm, I wonder who would try to change the status quo by force. And more on the threat of communist China after the break. Welcome back. Once again, 
the annual threat assessment from the U.S. Director of National Intelligence, says China poses the biggest threat to the U.S. China increasingly is a near-peer competitor, challenging the United States in multiple arenas, especially economically, militarily, and technologically, and is pushing to change global norms. Near-peer competitor? Not according to China. Their message is the U.S. and China are equal now. I mean, not in terms of military power, economic advantage, or international respect, but other than that, totally equal. And the Communist Party knows a thing or two about equality. Speaking of equality, the Chinese regime is also equally threatening Australia. That's according to this new report by the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, a leading Australian think tank. Basically, China's navy is targeting Australian ports, but not with weapons with investments. The Australian government is under pressure to take back a major Australian port that was leased to a Chinese company. Why? Because as the Darwin Port website says, it's a strategic location. Just look at all the places you can get to from it. Ooh, Taipei, very convenient. And now, let's hear from a man who really doesn't want to keep his job. Gao Fu, the director of the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention. He uh, may have admitted Chinese COVID vaccines aren't very effective. But then he clarified, when he mentioned Chinese vaccines aren't very effective, he didn't mean Chinese vaccines aren't very effective. In a message to the Associated Press, Gao said he was speaking about the effectiveness rates for vaccines in the world, not particularly for China. Yes, he was definitely not talking about China's Sinovac vaccine, which has an efficacy rate of barely 50%. He meant all COVID vaccines are ineffective, including the American ones. Coincidentally, the Communist Party has just announced that Gao will be volunteering for the next phase of human vaccine experiments. And leaked documents from the Chinese government show that the Communist Party is doing everything it can to prevent the spread of COVID from getting in the way of persecuting Falun Gong practitioners. The official document from a district in eastern China listed a campaign to suppress Falun Gong practitioners among the key achievements in that area in 2020, alongside other tasks such as controlling the pandemic and maintaining social stability. Okay, so just imagine working for the Chinese Communist Party. Here's your list of employee performance goals for 2020. Let's see, attend leadership training, improve time management. Ah, there it is, torture people for meditating. Check that one off the list. And it's not just Falun Gong practitioners being persecuted. Elite Communist Party members are too. That includes billionaires. More after the break. Welcome back. Jack Ma is a Communist Party member and one of China's richest men. But that hasn't stopped the Chinese regime from hitting him with a double whammy. Ma's company, Ant Group, was hit with a record $2.8 billion in fines and is being forced to completely restructure. This is clearly a warning to other Chinese tech companies. No matter how successful of a businessman you might be, it's the Chinese Communist Party that's in charge. Elon Musk must be taking that message to heart as it's come out that Tesla is collecting data on Chinese citizens and storing it in China, where, by law, the Chinese Communist Party can freely access it. Good news for the youth of China. Your beloved party is preparing you for the meat grinder. High school students are getting more military training to strengthen national defense. Might Chinese high school students be getting nervous? Well, there's no way to know since China has begun censoring speech about military affairs. Some of the most popular forums on WeChat, China's biggest social media app, have been shut down. It was implied that agencies from other countries use discussion on military affairs or weapons to analyze the regime's military developments, imposing a threat to national security. It's definitely not because Chinese youth might express concern about the war with Taiwan and the U.S. they're being pushed into. Because Chinese youth are all patriots. They have to be, or else. And just in case any of China's youth might be misled, the CCP has launched a hotline to report on people distorting or denying 
the Communist Party's excellent history and culture. The notice from China's top internet regulator said, For a while now, some people with ulterior motives have spread historically nihilistic, false statements online, maliciously distorting, slandering, and denying party, national, and military history in an attempt to confuse people's thinking. And the punishment? Totally unclear. The last week, authorities in Jiangsu province detained a 19-year-old for his insulting online comments about Japan's 1937 invasion of Nanjing during the Second Sino-Japanese War. But don't forget, the internet surveillance isn't limited to just patriotic Han Chinese kids. The Communist Party hasn't forgotten the Uyghurs. The CCP is forcing them to download a surveillance app that will let authorities know if anything on the phone might be dangerous. The app is called Web Cleansing. Such a nice name, not sinister at all. If a dangerous file is identified, the app sends a message to the person using the phone telling them to delete it. And according to a research team with the Open Technology Fund, any user with this app installed will have every file stored on their device sent to an unknown entity for monitoring. Oh, did I mention when the app sends files to the outside server, it's not encrypted either? But speaking of the patriotic youth of China, here's a small group of young men attacking a Hong Kong newspaper printing press. This is the Hong Kong branch of the Epoch Times, a newspaper known for supporting human rights and democracy in China. The Communist Party is not a fan. Neither are the guys with sledgehammers, or as the party calls them, equality sticks. The attack has been condemned by U.S. lawmakers, the State Department, and sledgehammer manufacturers worldwide. They would like to remind everyone of their motto, please, use as intended, which I assume is for sledges, whatever those are. And this episode is sponsored by Daily Peanut. If you want more daily news, and not just in a single 13-minute video, check out Daily Peanut. It's a bunch of fast, timely news stories selected for you and available to read on your phone, tablet, or computer. Okay, you're going to read it on your phone. That's why Alexander Graham Bell invented phones. Reading Daily Peanut is an easy way to filter out the noise and learn more about the world news that matters. Join more than 250,000 other readers. Education and entertainment delivered right to your inbox every morning. And the best part is, it's free. So sign up for Daily Peanut now. Use the link in the description below. I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching.